Hi, Denise Quinn, reading aloud for you for my short story, A Good Christian Woman, Chapter One. Here, Mamma said as she placed the steaming hot tureen of soup into my gloved hands. Run this over to Mrs. McClintock's for me, will you, honey? Mrs. McClintock? I cocked an eyebrow. She's still alive? Her cancer's come back. She's hanging on by a slender thread. Oh, when did she... She went for a mammogram in February. They found a lump. Cancer. Oh, dear, I didn't know. You've been so busy with school, honey. They did a quick lumpectomy, and everyone thought she was fine, but then... Mamma looked away. She went for a follow-up mammogram two months ago, followed by a biopsy, and then... Mamma lifted her thin shoulders in a what-do-you-expect kind of a shrug. You know. The cancer came back? It's too bad, really. Ralph died last Thanksgiving, and she's got nobody to keep her company anymore. She's all alone in that big rattling house of hers. Mamma nodded at the tureen. Get a move on, love, before it turns cold. Okay, Mamma. Her house faces ours. She's been neighbors with my grandparents for going on 55 years now. Bypass the front porch. Mrs. McClintock receives her mail there and likes to sit on the swing on a pleasant evening and sip iced tea. But she doesn't use it for anything else. The steps are too steep for her arthritic knees, she says. Everyone knows to enter her house through the back kitchen door. I stopped at the gate, nudged it open, and walked across the backyard that sloped all the way down to the creek. She must have been expecting me, for my kitchen, for the kitchen door swung open, and she stood in the doorway beaming at me. Oh, there you are, Mary Ann. So good to see you, my dear. Nice to see you, too, Mrs. McClintock. I walked up the three steps onto her back porch and straight into her cozy, tidy kitchen. How was your first semester at college, young lady? She shut the door and slid the bolt. And would you like a cup of tea? I think I did okay on my exams. I set the tureen down onto the counter close by the sink, stuffed my gloves into my coat pockets. And yes, I'd love a cup of tea. She filled the electric tea kettle with water and pushed the button. A teapot perched on the counter, so she must have suspected I'd accept a cup of tea. Our habit, after all. As she prepared the tea, she moved around her kitchen with the easy grace of a woman who has occupied this space for many years. I went to my chair at the kitchen table and shrugged off my coat. As I sat down carefully, all her chairs were from the 70s and set on casters to roll easily, I noticed the ornate oriental carpet laid out across the old-fashioned tile. It used to lay under the kitchen table. Now it snuggled up close by the sink. Apart from that one modification, nothing else had changed. Mamma started bringing me over here when I was four. At my first visit, I played on the oriental carpet, pretending it was an island in a sea of tile. My ship had struck an iceberg and sank to the bottom of the ocean. I swam to safety on this tropical island. Mamma and Mrs. McClintock sat at the table above and passed down cups of tea to me for nourishment as I plotted my escape to the landmass of carpeting in her front sitting room. I've matured a lot since then. At least I like to think so. She cocked her head at me. Earl Grey, or do you prefer something herbal? Oh no, Earl Grey's just fine. Need any help? No, no, you sit tight. I did as she bade me. She didn't like anybody to get in her way. This I well knew. I sat back in the chair, noticed a vast array of orange pill bottles marching across the table runner. She took a lot of medications. Poor thing. My nostrils flared at the softly sweet aroma of hot, chocolate, melting chocolate and butter and cookie dough. Oh, something smells yummy. You're just in time for some chocolate chip cookies fresh from the oven. She stuffed her hand into a mitt and pulled open the oven door, set the tray onto the counter. 
slid two gooey cookies off it with a spatula and onto a plate, which she carried over to the table and set down in front of me. I've gained five pounds since I got to Mama's, I said, reaching for the first cookie and taking a bite. The chocolate melted. Tears filled my eyes as memories of warmth and comfort and love overwhelmed me. The tea kettle sang and clicked off. She dropped two tea bags into the teapot, poured in the piping hot water, and carried the tray to the table. Set it down in front of me. Two delicate porcelain cups, a matching pitcher of milk, a sugar bowl, and two spoons. Mrs. McClintock, I'm so sorry to hear, I gasped back a sob. Don't talk of it. It's in the Lord's hands now. I just... She sat down at the head of the table and reached forward to squeeze my hand. Her grip surprised me with its strength. Mamma told me, yes, yes, your dear mamma has been keeping a close eye on me. Bless her heart. She took me to my last chemotherapy appointment. Oh. She pushed a box of tissues toward me. I pulled out a handful and blew my nose. The intense bond between my grandmother and Mrs. McClintock was an object of admiration and envy throughout the neighborhood. What are your thoughts? Mrs. McClintock asked softly. She'd been watching me. Every time I come here, Mrs. McClintock, I'm amazed at how wonderful and caring everyone in this neighborhood is. You've got no idea just how plain shitty the people in my mother's neighborhood are. Well, your mamma's a special kind of lady. She's always looked out for me. Very true. Milk in your tea? Yes, please. She poured milk into the teacup, followed by the golden frothing steam of hot tea. Stream of hot tea. I dropped in a sugar cub, cube, stirred, sipped. Heavenly. I glanced at her to smile my appreciation, but she turned her head away, her lips trembling. Oh, the poor dear lady. She's frightened about the cancer diagnosis. Mrs. McClintock, I hope like hell that you beat this cancer. Oh, thank you, dear, she said absently. I sure hope so. A faraway expression filled her eyes. At last her gaze cleared and she looked directly at me. It's funny, isn't it? What's that? You're how old now? Eighteen? Yes, I said, surprised at the change in topic. You know, it's been so long ago now, when I was your age. Why, it feels as if I never got to enjoy my youth. Oh? Especially when I look at you, so bright, so young, so full of vitality. Oh, that's too bad. I was born old. I don't know so much about that, I said lightly playfully. After all, you were young during the swinging 60s. She smiled ruefully. Oh, as to that. Yes, as to that. People like your mamma enjoyed the swinging 60s, dear. Right up to and straight through to the swinging 70s, too, if I may be so bold. I chuckled politely, but a tendril of uneasiness flared in my heart. Was that a dig at Mama? Girls like me? Things were far different for me growing up in the 60s than they were for your Mama. Why, I was a young married woman and starting a family. Oh, and then it hit me. I'd forgotten. That's right. You, you had a family, didn't you? A little boy. He died when he was five in 1973. The words hung in the air between us. Despite the warmth of her kitchen and the hot tea warming my bones, a chill flitted through me. My stomach clenched as if I'd been punched. It took me a moment to recover, and as I sat there trying to absorb what she'd said, she pushed her chair back and stood up. I'm due at the hairdressers in 15 minutes, dear. Why don't you run along?